Hey family, I would like to introduce just a small snippet of our prayer meetings on Sundays. This is from my other channel, Marriage for the Purpose of Eternity. We have now begun the war room prayer meeting every Sunday at 8 p.m. interceding for marriages, family, and children. My cousin Antoinette leads a prayer session with teachings and prayer points. She has been married for almost 12 years and has endured through very difficult tests to continue to love like Christ to believe in all things, hope in all things, and endure in all things in her marriage, as the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 13, 7. She's a wellspring of wisdom by adding personal experience and testimonies that make it relatable for anyone joining. We'll have others leading the prayer meeting at different times. We then pray in the spirit covering marriages, praying the prayer points, and interceding for others. Join us on Zoom at 8 p.m. every Sunday. If you can, please send prayer requests to marriage for the purpose of eternity at gmail.com and we will pray for you. Here's a small snippet. Look forward to having you join us next Sunday. Oh, you're always like this. What did I think about it? What did I do? Or what did my partner do that it wasn't maybe it was the enemy that was using more, or the enemy was using them to come at me or the enemy was using me to get to them? You know, so once again, I think in the past, the last few, I think last week was about patience and the past week we talked about love. If we practice all these things and put these things in place, when we, we will see the enemy coming at us, we will see the strategies of the enemy, we will see the weapons that the enemy is using and we won't easily get offended. Another thing that we easily, enemy uses to easily um, offend us is our emotions. And I know this is a really huge one and, and um, girl, women can be really sensitive, but these days men are just as sensitive, I will say, <laughs> you know, so the enemy will use your emotions against you and, uh, and the Bible says the heart is deceiving so easily so that you can get so easily worked up, so easily offended, so easily offended by um, what your partner will do or say or act or, you know, and it's all in your mind. The enemy, another, apart from your emotions, is the mind as well, that the enemy will be using things, whispering thoughts, whispering these negative thoughts about your partner. Oh, yeah, they did that on purpose. Yeah, you see, he didn't even notice you. Yeah, you did your hair. He didn't even say that your hair was nice. You know, all these little things, whispering evil thoughts in your mind. Oh, he doesn't love you. See, oh my goodness, there's another person calling. It must be another girl calling or, oh no, um, he's with his co-worker. Like all these insecurities that the enemy was just bombard your mind with this is also another strategy of the enemy whispering and um putting all these evil thoughts and negative thoughts in your mind about your partner you know and so i would always i would always say that rebuke these thoughts straight away and say the say the opposite of whatever it, the enemy is saying in your mind so once again, these are just things that I would I brought up today just to discuss briefly about how the enemy is attacking us. So it starts off with these small things, but then it becomes frustration and arguing and bickering. And then you don't even know how it, it started, but then you're just arguing and you're not you're not being nice to each other you, you're keeping things inside yourself you're you know you're just shouting you're screaming you know if you're offended you're offended you're second guessing one another and then it just develops 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 a year down the track two years down the track three years into the marriage four five six years into the marriage you just you can't even stand being with that person that person that you so loved that you walked down the altar with that you, you know you said i'm gonna love this person for the rest of my life you can't even recognize them anymore you know, I, I heard um, a famous preacher the other day saying that um, love doesn't keep a marriage. And in the first in the first sense, I would be like. In the first sense, I would be like, that's true. But when I thought deeply about it and how the Lord was um, using me to talk about love, I was like, no, this is wrong because God is all about love. And everything about God is love. And everything about Christ is love. So when we have Christ, it's all love. And Christ wants us, if we have love and we're loving like Christ in our marriage, nothing can really go wrong. Because then you're patient, then you're tolerant, then you can put up with your partner, then you can see, you can, you, you rather see them as a victim. You pray for them instead of like, um, instead of shouting at them. You, you're more understanding because you love the person, you know, being in love, the feeling that we can go away. But I think that truly God always loves us. So if we can like love like Christ, then that is, I, I don't see how that love doesn't keep a marriage. I don't believe in that at all. I honestly really believe that not human love doesn't keep a marriage, but the, if, we, if yeah. we aim to love like Christ, mm -hmm. then definitely that will keep a marriage. 
Um, am I going over time or do we have more time? Yeah, you know, I have more time. Okay. So, yes. So I would like us to this today just to really think about how the enemy has been using you. Don't think about your partner. And um, so often I'm, I, I, so often I, always think about what my husband has done to me, A, B, D, Z, you know, but the Holy Spirit's always interested about what I'm doing because God is always interested about correcting you and fixing mm -hmm. you and helping you change for us. So mm -hmm. I just like us to right now, just take a minute to ourselves as um, everything that I've said, just take a minute to yourself and look at yourself and think about it. Think about like, what are you doing? How has the enemy used you this week in your marriage? anything that the enemy has whispered in your thoughts, bad thoughts that you've had in your mind, whatever the enemy has done or has used you. Maybe you said some words you should have not said. Maybe you thought some things that you should have not thought. Maybe you you did things that you know your partner doesn't like, but you did it anyways, knowing that your partner didn't like it. Whatever it may be, big or small, just think about it. Take a minute. I'm just going to be silent for a minute for us to really just look at ourselves. Look at yourself. Don't look at your partner. Don't look at your spouse. Look at yourself and think about what um you have done and if you don't have a spouse and you're on the line then just think about um yourself maybe anything that you've done out of character that you know that god may not be pleased with you know ask the holy spirit to um, you know show these things to you so i'll just be quiet for a minute while we think about those things now if you've thought about the any reflection self-reflection that you've done and then you can just ask the Holy Spirit what you can do differently. What could have you done differently? How could you handle the situation differently? Okay, so before we go into prayer, I would like to give an example of something personally that happened to me just to maybe um, help everybody else. So last week I had a really important event. Uh, one of um, my nieces was getting married. Um, and so it was a really huge event in Ghana. Like Ghana, they do weddings big here. They go all out. So we had to like, it was a, a black tie event. And my uncle personally called us and said, listen, it's a black tie event. Make sure you dress up. And so I seen like, I don't usually go to weddings a lot, but I seen the way that they dress up in the wedding scene. So I was like, I was very particular. So I was praying the whole week about what I was going to wear. And I was praying the whole week that my husband would like what I was going to wear. And I mean, I literally prayed. Like, I mean, I called everyone to pray. I called with Mother Mary. I prayed with my son. I prayed with everyone that, that night I actually prayed that I would look amazing and that my husband would love what I would wear. You know, I was really dressing for him. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that day I'm, you know, I got ready, got my hair done, got my makeup done, put my dress on. And um, my husband was, um, came to come pick me up to the event. And when he got here, he was underdressed, but I didn't say anything, you know, but then he looked at me and he was like, you're so overdressed. And he, he oh, all of a sudden just got really upset. And he's like, you're so overdressed. Why are you so overdressed? You're not the bride. Blah, 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 blah. And he got really upset about it. And he actually left. He said, I'm not going with you. Like, you're too overdressed. And he left. <laughs> <laughs> he left without me. Hey. Yes, I'm giving you guys this testimony because I want you to see what happened next. Okay. So just remember, I've been praying the whole week about this. Yes. So now I've been praying about this. Now the enemy started to bombard me with thoughts. Ah, you see? See? I told you. You wouldn't like your dress. You God didn't answer your prayers. All that praying you did for nothing. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all these negative thoughts was going through my mind. And I was just like, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Now, you know, the funny thing is, how I had to put myself in the car because the dress was so big that I couldn't, um, how am I going to drive inside the car? <laughs> so I managed to get inside the car and they, like, they literally had to like put the, the whole, the rest of the dress inside the car. So I got inside the car and as I'm driving, I was trying to call my spiritual mother because I was so upset. I was like, oh my Lord, like I can't even cry because I spent all this time doing makeup, you know? And I was like, how could he do this? Like, how could he leave me? Like, what, what kind of person does this? Like, this is just so wrong. Like, I'm so done. Like, this is it. Like, you know, like, this is it, you know? And then I was trying to call my spiritual mother as I was driving. I was driving, you know? And she wouldn't pick up. And I was like, Lloyd, what is happening here? Like, what? Like, <laughs> I just needed some comfort. Somebody talked to me, like, at that point. And I heard the Lord saying, oh, oh, oh he is little faith. And I was just like, oh my gosh, Lord. And God, that I promised you, like I, I, and I, the thing is in my quiet time, 
that day, God had told me that he promised me that I was going to have an amazing event. And he promised me that I would go to the event and everybody would be saying, oh, you look so amazing. Like you, you know, like, you know, you look so wonderful. You look beautiful. And that my husband would be happy with it. And so the opposite just occurred. And then God was telling me, oh, ye of little faith. I was like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what? And I, so as I was driving, I was like, you know, okay, fine. Called my spiritual mother maybe 10 times. She didn't even pick up. Like, you know, I was destroyed. I was like, I, I couldn't cry. Like, you know, when you want to cry, but you can't cry. So I had to like suck it in. And I was like, okay. So I started, okay, you know what? I'm going to pray. I'm just going to pray. I put the, my music on in my car. I worship music, started worshiping, started praying. As I'm praying, a part of me was really angry. So as I'm praying, like I'm, I'm saying the prayer and I'm like, uh-uh, this is, this is so wrong. Like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm saying, oh Lord, thank you for this. Thank you that I'm going to go to the event. And then like, you know, even my husband himself is going to, you know, like turn around and like, and then I'm still angry. I was still angry. <laughs> so as I was praying, I was like, nah, this is wrong. So I started rebuking my anger. It's like, and I started just saying like, cause the enemy was just bombarding me with all these negative thoughts and all these thoughts. And I was like, nope, no, 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 no. I started rejecting it. I finally got a hold of myself because I was like, holy spirit, I just really need your help right now. I really, really need your help right now to get it together. I got myself together and I started like declaring by faith what I wanted to happen. I said, I declare by faith that as I get to the event, my husband is the one that's going to be embarrassed and because he's going to be underdressed and everybody else is going to be overdressed, like, you know, like just like me. <laughs> and I was like, declaring by faith that. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. Yes, I was. <laughs> I was. I was declaring by faith. I was like, enemy, no, I was like declaring by faith that I was going to have an amazing night, that my husband was going to like end up apologizing to me and telling me how beautiful I was. And, I, and then I started saying to myself, speaking to myself, as if people were speaking to myself, oh my goodness, Marie, you look so nice today. Oh, wow. I was like saying it to myself, like, like a crazy person <laughs> driving and talking. But I was, so I, was prediction. I was like, not, nah, I am like adamant. This is going to work. So guess what happens? I'm almost there. I'm like five minutes away from the event. Guess who calls me? My husband calls me. He's like calling me on the phone. He's calling me on the phone. And I was like, oh, should I pick up? And I was like, oh, let me just pick up. You know, so I picked up the phone. I was like, yes. And then he was like, where are you? I'm like, aren't you the person that left? Like, why are you asking me where I am? He's like, oh, no, no, please. Like, where are you? I'm like, I'm just five minutes. Like, it's okay. Okay, I'm waiting for you at the front. Okay. I was like, huh? I was like, okay, all right, whatever. You know, <laughs> so, I <hung> <laughs> on. <laughs> so I got to be, I got there. And like, it's so funny because it was a huge wedding. So everybody was like parked really far away. And then the Lord was like, you'll see favor the whole night. And just the little things that God did to me that day was so amazing. So I got there and the, the man, the security guard parked me right in front of the vent. And he like, he literally, like there was a, a, a block way, but he moved it so that I could park right there. So I wouldn't have to walk all the way. Thank goodness, because of my dress, I didn't know what I was going to do. And so then my husband came and he was like, oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so underdressed, you know, like, and he was saying everything that I said he would. And I was like, oh my goodness, Lord. And then as soon as I, we stepped in the van, everybody was complimenting me. Oh, you look so beautiful. Wow, I love your dress. You look amazing. And then my husband takes my hand back and then he holds my hand and walks me <laughs> to the event. Oh, now, now he wants to show you off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so like, he exactly, he wants to show me off. So then he was like holding me and grabbing me. And then he's like, okay, uh, so do you want me to help you with your dress? Do you want me to hold your dress? Like, no, just hold my hand back. You know, <laughs> 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 so I was like wow Lord like the whole time I had this huge smile and nobody knew the smile that I had inside my heart yeah. inside my yeah. head because God yeah. had did what he's gonna do Amen. so I think my my whole testimony to you and then just talking about this is how the enemy works against us even the last minute like sometimes we'll pray God has already answered our prayers God had already answered my but you see what the enemy did yeah. I could have just like easily maybe just like given up at that moment. I'm not going to the event or I'm like, I could have just like maybe also been angry at my husband. Like, you know, also like when he turned around, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? When God touched him and he turned around, I could have like also met him with anger. Yeah. Cold shoulder. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. But I decided not to because I knew God had already spoken to my heart. So I just hope that mm. that little story yeah. encouraged you guys that this is marriage. You know, marriage is hard. The enemy is always going to be using us against each other, especially when you're praying because the 
enemy doesn't want you to feel that God is by your side. And mm. so every little thing, you know, it's just a, this, this is a very small thing, but if you're mad, you know what I mean. You know, if you're mm. a woman, you know how hard it is to get dressed and all these things. And, and you know, your whole thing is to please. You don't even care about anybody at the event. You just want to please your husband all the time. So I just hope that this little story encourage everybody today not to give up. And if you pray, pray in faith and believe that God has heard you because he really, really has. And just to recognize these little attacks that the enemy is always going to attack us. The enemy is always going to use you against your spouse. It's like, you you know, marriage is, to, is preparing us for heaven. You know, mm. so God, the enemy uses and God allows these things to happen to test your faith, to test you and to, to help you to grow as well. You know, so it is really, really difficult sometimes. It's very, very difficult. You get really, really hard. But, you know, we must trust God and we must keep doing everything out of love, 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 love. Just remember love, 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 love. And then pray that, you know, it will be well with all of us. Yeah. So thank you guys today. That is um, what I have to speak about. And I'd like us to go into prayer today. And we're going to be praying against every evil force that is creating confusion in marriages and turning married couples against each other. Just remembering that every day when you wake up, just remember that it's not you. It's, it's not your spouse. If there's something higher and bigger behind the, behind the scenes doing these things. So we shouldn't be angry at each other. We should be kind and loving and patient and forgiving, knowing that, okay, you know what? This is a person I might still the same person or even the person's even a better person now because together we are better. And then just remembering that, you know, the enemy is using, you know, how can we deal with this? How can we see this, the, the tactics of the enemy? What strategy is the enemy using today? Quickly see it and deal with it quickly and pray out. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, if you'd like to go ahead, um, um, Mother, are you going to lead the prayer or should I? Uh, yeah, so I, we'll just go ahead and uh, so I guess we'll stand on that prayer point. I don't know if any, before you pray, I don't know if anyone had anything to add or even a question or anything like that. Yes, yes, of course. Pray. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Anyone? I don't have a question, but I just wanted to just say that thank you so much for sharing that testimony. That was very, um, putting it into perspective. I mean, just hearing it to me, it was like, it was funny, but at the same time too, like the way that most of us would have reacted, I know I can speak for myself, but when you have been with so much care and love, considering I would see them as a victim of the enemy, I would take it personal. So I just want to thank you for sharing that. Yeah, oh, great, great example of self-control. Thank you anyone, so much. Anyone else? Yeah, I think it was a good. It was a good. Uh, good for even people like us who've been married for years, because, uh, like she said, this week I was impatient with Caroline a couple of times, quite impatient. But uh, you know, sometimes if you're not careful, you'll think she's the enemy, and <laughs> she's not really the enemy. <laughs> so yeah, true. It's, you know, so. It's a good, it's a timely message. And I think because marriage is the most intimate relationship in the world, in, in you know, in mankind. So, you know, if, you know, if your marriage works, if, you know, what we are being taught tonight works for you, you can easily spot what the devil is doing. It will be even outside your marriage. Things can be very easy because marriage is the most intimate. You know, we yeah. are very familiar with each other in marriage. You know, it it's easy to take granted of your of your of your spouse. So if you quickly realize it's the work of the devil, because it's for me, I'll tell you very easily. It's easy for me to look at the people I deal with every day, and I can easily see this the devil and I restrain myself. But sometimes yeah. in the home, it becomes difficult because I expect her to know better. So, so yeah, I awesome. think it's important. Yeah, and you know, you can waste a lot of graces even for two three hours because. You've just you've just sulked, you know. You can just, you know, even grown men like us sulk sometimes because of you know you don't know what to do. So you end up sulking for a couple of hours. I know that's that's the the devil does that, especially we are in ministry. It even interferes with the with you know the prayer and whatever you need to be doing. So thanks thanks for the message. That was good. Yeah, and I am into that. Now I just add to as well. It's interesting because the pastor that's what we talked about this Sunday. Uh, was about casting down every thought and high imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and holding every thought captive and how the enemy uh, plays a spirit called the tyranny of memories. And this spirit is uh, really good at replaying memories of the past, memories of relationship. And a lot of us, many of us, we have triggers. 
uh, as Antoinette said, um, and as triggers are simply just buttons and buttons that have been formed through uh, experiences in our life, whether it's through childhood, adolescent, uh, through our youth, and uh, especially in uh, as we're talking about marriages, it comes a lot of times from our past, our past or even experiences in your marriage that the person has done. And uh, the enemy is so good at, um, just as she mentioned for me, I realized the Lord has really gave me uh, the grace to kind of understand when uh, the enemies presents itself in a situation. But he told me also the one way area I'm weak is when he comes and he does something. Um, if he, let's say one time a situation happens, something happens, or, you know, uh, my husband does something and me, I'm like, my flesh wants to rise about, wait a minute, this is enemy trying to rise me up. I'm not going to fall for it. So when he does it one time, I'm good. But let it be like five times in the day. The first time I'm good. The second time it happens again. Wait a minute. It, is that per- like, is he doing this on purpose? The third time, then I'm <laughs> trying to get really frustrated, irritated. The fourth time I just explode. And so, so uh, he's, uh, he, he has a, the enemy has a blueprint on, on, on all of us. And he knows our buttons. One thing may be a button for you. Let's say somebody else, they may not respond or got angry about that situation yeah. and nothing. Uh, yeah. so we have to rec- we have to we have to come to a place of really knowing ourselves, uh, knowing the areas where we've been wounded in the past, asking what to heal that, and most importantly, I think just really finding down the thoughts because when the bunt is pressed, the first thing that we want to respond is take that personal or make it seem as if um, you know you've been hurt by something. To take offense, just as she mentioned, and we take offense, we either respond in silence and in love, or in communicating that effectively to the person, or rather responding in anger. And a lot of times it just comes down to patience. Uh, but when we're not patient, uh, just uh, entering, give a great, uh, the Lord gave you a great, uh, a great example, a great testimony of just your patience, trusting waiting on the Lord and trusting with his word versus responding and reacting. And I think many times, I know for me, I've really struggled with reacting because I'm just, I just naturally want to just react or I want to talk about it. And if he reacts in a certain way, that's not favorable to what I want. Like somebody who's like, oh, I understand, honey, come give me a hug. I'm so sorry. Like that works for me. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> and he responds in anger, irritation. That's exactly what happened like this week, you know? He's on such an anger, irritation. I was like, no, he didn't. Let me go outside. Oh, let me get myself together. Lord, help me. Help me grab, help me grab myself together. And just things happen back to back, all these triggers. I was like, man, the devil is just having a field day. So I think it's just coming to a place yeah. of recognizing yourself, you know, what triggers you. And then also, too, uh, just she's mentioned, just trying to cast on a thought and I'll speak the best over the situation. And sometimes, too, like, say, even if uh like her a story was such a testimony but there many more times that you'll pray and do these things and actually go complete opposite and that's really where we're tested to as well to see yeah. okay even if the person doesn't respond favorably how are we going to respond are we still be cold are we going to be silent and i struggle with those things too as well so this is a great prayer point that you brought up and i think as we as i've learned as we're doing this prayer meetings we're always i'm always tested in everything that you teach Everything I teach, I know that this week, guys, just be sure. I know we'll come back next Sunday. We'll all be tested in this area of uh, of uh, not seeing our spouses or seeing a situation as a, uh, seeing the enemy for what he presents versus seeing um, seeing yeah. our spouses as the enemy. So we definitely have to be mindful, ask a little for grace to cast on the thoughts. And uh, I always just think the best. May, may he help us all. <laughs>